Hello, my name is Clara. I am a peer review officer at Praise, and I will be presenting the peer review process. Hello, I'm Katarina Simões, and I'm also peer review office at Praise. So today we will present you um, a short uh, presentation on the peer review process. We will start for uh, giving a short uh, description on the, the calls uh, we manage, but uh, they are not that prominent. And then we'll go into detail on project access and preparatory access. So uh, shape uh, is a call, shape and decky are calls that are not managed directly in the, in the office, but it are praise calls. Uh, shape is for industry, small uh, small and medium enterprises and DECI is for access to tier one uh, systems. COVID fast tra track call was a, a call we had uh, last year, so uh, from 20 March 2020 to March 2021, as you can see from the name, uh, was for uh, proposals related to with the COVID to mitigate the impact of COVID that is still uh, seen. And, um, and um, we have also a call called ICEI, a call for uh, access to uh, scalable computing uh, services, interacting uh, services, virtual machines. And uh, this is uh, for uh, the call is open uh, three times a year. Um, the, the next one will, will open soon this September. And um, in what follows, we will describe a little bit more on project access and preparatory access. But uh, in general, uh, our peer review is based on, on these uh, five pillars, transparency, fairness, conflict of interest policy, the respect of the conflicts of interest policy, um, based on the scientific uh, evaluation uh, done by, by experts on the domain of, of, the, of the projects and, of course, confidentiality. So all our scientific reviewers uh, are um, anonymous. Only the office knows the identity of those, those uh, reviewers. Um, you can find all this uh, information on our website, as well as the information on the, the, all the calls Praise uh, has. Um, so for uh, project access, the, we have two calls a year, one opening in March, one opening in September, and uh, the applicants can uh, request access for one year or more, two or three, called multi-year projects. If they request access and if they are awarded, they will need to go through a midterm evaluation in the end of each year. Um, the submissions can be a first-time submission or a resubmission if the applicant failed to get awarded in the past, or a continuation if the applicant is requesting resources to continue work that was done or that is still ongoing on praise machines. In that case, in case of continuation proposals, uh, applicants need to provide us uh, report, final or, 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 or progress report, in the moment of the submission. Who can apply? Everyone, researchers and scientists from academia and industry, can apply as far as they have a valid contract with a research institution in the moment of the submission and up to three uh, months after the award in case of award. And our proposals uh, uh, so applicants can only apply if their proposals are for civilian purpose, so non-military. And double granting is not permitted, permitted which, means, which means that uh, applicants that were awarded uh, with praise resources to do a certain uh, research cannot apply, cannot be awarded to do the same, exactly the same uh, study. So um, on call 23, we had um, uh, resources offered from several uh, uh, computer centers from uh, Juliot Curie in France, that, that is composed by three uh, uh, petitions, Hawk in, in Stuttgart, Germany, uh, Jewels, that uh, is the machine in Jülich, a GPU and a CPU system, so two petitions, Pitstein, GPU uh, system in, in Switzerland, Mare Nostrum, uh, in Barcelona and uh, Marconi, this is also a GPU system in in um, in Italy. So we advise uh, applicants to check the documentation um, uh, on our web page because for each call we have we might have different machines, different requirements, different uh, criteria. 
Um, and so they they are advised to, 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 to look into the documentation that is also uh, always updated on our web page. And now I will start um, speaking a little bit about the process, the evaluation process. So as I said, we have the call open for uh, two times. Uh, we open the, the call for, for project access two times a year, one in September, um, and for which the allocation will happen in, 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 in April, and one in March for which the allocation will happen in October. So the full process lasts for six months. We have the, the, pro, the, 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 the submission uh, uh, period open for uh, two months, and during that time applicants need to, to use our platform. Clara will mention this later on, a platform and, you and use the correct template. So upload the, the scientific project uh, written uh, using the appropriate um, template. Um, once we, we close the, 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 the call, the peer review office will perform uh, uh, an administrative check and we will make sure that uh, all the criteria are uh, respected. The use of the correct template, the, the, the minimum resources are according to the, what is, was published for the call. All the sections and subsections are filled in. Uh, we have scaling plots, tables, Gantt charts, everything is, is uh, respects what, what was published for the call. If it happens that some uh, applicants do not respect these uh, those criteria. Unfortunately, uh, those uh, applications will be rejected administratively and will not proceed further on the evaluation. Uh, those that will proceed uh, on the evaluation will go through a technical assessment that is done by the technical colleagues on the centers. Um, and, um, and it is very important that the applicants uh, perform a preparatory access before applying to, 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 to project uh, access. Uh, in case of the of uh, Saint machine machine in Switzerland, it is mandatory. But even for the other centers, the technical colleagues uh, value the fact that applicants uh, perform um, um, preparatory access. Once the technical assessment is complete, we, we move to the scientific evaluation that is performed by three reviewers. Those reviewers, as I mentioned, are uh, the identity are, is not revealed and uh, the names of these reviewers is um, uh, defined by the, 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 the rapporteurs, uh, the access uh, committee members on duty, together with the office that will try to find reviewers available that kindly uh, accept to do the scientific review. Uh, once we collect all these uh, evaluations, the applicants will have a period of seven days to respond and comment on the questions that were raised during both technical and the scientific assessment. Although this step is not mandatory, this is highly valued uh, by the, the, the Press Access Committee and all applicants should um, respond um, comment something, even a simple basic thank you to the to the reviewers is appreciated. And in what follows, I will pass the word to my colleague Clara to keep going with the explanation of the of the process. Thank you, Katarina. I will now continue uh, with the explanation of our peer review pro process for project access proposals. I will focus on the resource allocation stage. So we now see on uh, the slide the first box that appears is the rapporteur report. So um, per, per proposal, we assign two rapporteurs, mm -hmm. one lead rapporteur and one second rapporteur. They are each obliged to submit their individual reports and the lead rapporteur also writes the consolidated report. Um, <clears throat> then after we have all of this documentation in place, we proceed with uh, to the access committee meeting, which is a three days meeting where uh, the discussion and ranking of the proposals uh, is uh, held. Uh, so they take into consideration all of the information that Katarina mentioned and also uh, some of the information that I've mentioned. Uh, so all the scientific and technical evaluations and the rapporteur reports. The other thing that is also uh, valued and uh, taken into consideration while ranking the proposals are also the responses from the applicants. So after the access committee meeting, um, uh, they they will rank the proposals and give, and give their recommendations for the allocations. And after we will proceed to the resource allocation session. Uh, this is an executive meeting where uh, we, we ex execute the official allocation of the resources. 
So here is what is important to highlight. We have a 10% prioritization for industry track proposals and as well 10% threshold for, for multi-year proposals. Uh, additionally, 0.5% uh, is reserved for centers of excellence. Uh, so the um, results of the resource allocation session are either awarded, the proposals are either awarded or not awarded, which is of course then communicated to the applicants. Uh, we include um, the access committee members feedback on the communication. This is, um, we find this to be very useful, especially for the applicants that unfortunately did not pass the evaluation and were not awarded. And uh, with these comments, they can use this to improve their uh, future submissions. So uh, to finish the project access explanations and, um, and the evaluation stage, we would like to, to highlight a couple of advices uh, to, to applicants. So as Katarina mentioned, preparatory access is uh, very important for, for obtaining benchmarking data and to, uh, uh, for code scalability. Uh, it is highly advised to include strong justification for the resources requested. Also to take into the consideration the minimum resources request per HPC system. Uh, another thing that we would like to highlight is the communication with our office, the peer review office, and also with the high performance computing centers. They are very helpful. They will answer all of your technical questions if you have some. Uh, for multi-year proposals, this is important. They are um, subject to midterm evaluations and they can receive up to 10% of the resources uh, offered per system. Uh, continuation proposals, mand it is mandatory to include progress or final reports depending on the um, uh, project status uh, in the time of the submission period. For industry track, we have 10% of resources per system that are, that are reserved. And uh, the response to reviews, this is highly valued by the access committee members, so please respond to your, uh, to your reviews. Um, furthermore, I will now continue with a short explanation of the preparatory access calls, which, as Katarina mentioned, are uh, meant for feeding the project access proposals. So we have four types. Uh, on this slide, we were, I, I will address the types A and B. Uh, so for the types A and B, this is a rolling call. For, for type A, we have the, the, it's intended for code scalability tests. Uh, it lasts for two months and you can obtain resources on tier zero systems. For type B, uh, the type B is intended for code development and optimization. Um, the allocations last for six months and you can also obtain uh, resources on tier zero systems. After the, the proposals are submitted, uh, the proposals we go, will go uh, under the technical assessment, which is executed by the HPC centers. Afterwards, they, uh, the results will be communicated to the applicants. For the type C and D, we have four cutoffs um, per year. Uh, type C is intended for code development and optimization. Uh, this includes as well the praise expert support. Uh, it lasts for six months and you can obtain uh, resources on tier zero systems. Type D is a bit different. Uh, it is uh, intended for code adaptation and optimization. You will also receive um, support from praise experts, but the duration is for one year and the systems are tier one. Uh, <clears throat> after the proposals are submitted, they are subject to two technical assessments. So the technical assessments done by the HPC centers and the technical assessment covered by the work package seven. So in order to pass this evaluation, uh, both technical assessments need to be successful. So if one is successful, the other one is not, uh, the proposal will, will be rejected as a type C or type D uh, proposal. So both need to be accepted. And this is of course then communicated to the applicants. And this is a short timeline for preparatory access calls. Uh, so for types A and B, this is continuously open while types C and D uh, have quarterly cutoff dates. Um, the access start date is up to two to three weeks for types A and B. This is fairly fast, while for types C and D it can last a little bit longer, where the access is provided starting approximately 45 to 60 calendar days after the cutoff date. Um, 
the last thing that we would like to show and explain a bit is our new peer review platform. Uh, so the applicants have to submit their proposals through the peer review platform. And uh, this is the a screenshot of a submission form. So here the applicants are able to see the workflow um, of each evaluate uh, of, of the evaluation process. So under the first um, step, which is the project application, this is actually the submission form and the proposal itself. Under the project, the applicants are obliged to submit their uh, project scope and plan that Katarina previously as well mentioned. So this is the proposal itself. This is how it looks. And now we will uh, also show how the evaluations and responses work in the peer review platform. So as I mentioned before, we have the project application. This is the, um, the application itself. Then we have the technical assessment where the technical assess assessments will be submitted uh, by the HPC centers. The applicants can navigate through, through the submitted assessments here. Then we have the scientific evaluation step um, where the scientific uh, evaluations will, will be uh, shown and the applicants can also navigate through here. Uh, on the fourth step of the process, the applicants are able to submit their responses to reviews uh, submitted by the technical and scientific experts. Uh, and also, it's important to highlight that they are able to also attach any documents um, they, they want to, uh, with, with which they want to highlight uh, certain criticisms or answers. Uh, under resources allocation decision, uh, this is um, a step where that shows the summary of the allocation results. The last one is the response to allocation. So in case of the uh, award, this uh, step will be shown and the applicants sh should have to submit um, their um, confirmation of the resources here. So they have to confirm that they want to obtain the mentioned resources. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this is the end of our uh, short presentation. I hope you, you enjoyed it.